Hey everybody, we're talking about the adversarial legal system and how it's satanic. Okay, that's brought to us by these Vatican bar members. Okay, it's a satanic religious ceremony is what it is. Okay, and we'll go through about what that's all about. Um, this is uh, taken from the um, Texas Code of Criminal Procedure, Article 46B. During an examination under this subchapter and in any report based on that examination, an expert shall consider into... Um, in addition to other issues, determine the relevant by the expert the following, and uh, and one of the points is they have to understand the adversarial nature of criminal proceedings. Okay, so that judge he's not interested in protecting anybody's rights. He's he's playing stupid up there. Okay, and this is a Supreme Court case, Granville versus Texas. 495 U.S. 963, 1990. Ake mandates the provision of a psychiatrist who would be part of the defense team and serve the defendant's interest in the context of our adversarial system. Okay? So, they are not interested in doing anything for you. There, That judge is sitting up there. He's a clerk. He's bought and paid for. There's nothing just that's going to come out of that. Um, they're going to sell you down the river. I don't even go in there. They have to drag me in there if they want me in there, I'll tell you. And I just file a notice of void judgment afterwards. It's an adversarial system. That judge is not protecting your rights. He couldn't give a shit about your rights. And it's satanic. It really is. Um, this is Canada. Same thing. Okay. This is a Canadian case. Um, in general accident assurance versus shrews, the court adopted the views expressed by R.J. Sharp in claiming privilege in the discovery process and law and transition evidence. LSUC Special Lectures, Toronto. At page 163, in other words, litigation privilege aims to facilitate the process, namely the adversary process, while solicitor-client privilege aims to protect a relationship, namely the confidential relationship between a lawyer and a client. And so the point is, is that this adversarial system all comes from the crown, from the Vatican, and from England and the Vatican. And there's no justice that goes on there. They couldn't care less about the right thing or anything else. It's a commercial transaction. They're selling you into slavery. Uh, so it's all coming from bar members. So who are bar members? Well, between 75 and 90 percent of all tr lawyers are either incompetent, dishonest, or both. And that's Earl Warren, former Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, Earl Warren was the guy that was in charge of the Warren Commission, you know, which investigated this Kennedy's assassination. Um, he is, however, in a sense, an officer of the state with an obligation to the court. Okay, that's seven corpus juris secundum, section four, attorneys. Okay. Okay. So uh, his first duty is to the court and to the public and not to the client. So, you know, I don't care if you got a lawyer. Matter of fact, <laughs> I would never hire one of those lying, thieving bar members. Uh, his first duty is to the courts and the public, not the client. Whenever his duties to his client conflict with those as an officer of the court in the administration of justice, the former must yield to the latter. Okay. So, again... It's nothing about justice that goes on in those courtrooms, okay? Absolutely nothing to do with justice. And um, clients, clients, okay, so you're talking about a client. Clients are also called wards of the court, okay? So they're, they're taking advantage of you, okay? They're converting you into the ward of the court, and they're going to sell you down the river. Wards of the court, infants, persons of love and sound mind, their rights must be guarded jealously. Yeah, oh yeah, they're going to protect your rights. Oh, I believe you. Really, I do. Millions wouldn't, but I do. This is Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. So they're going to, they're, when you hire an attorney, you're saying, I'm an imbecile. I need this attorney to make decisions for me. Okay, they're going to sell you down that river. A ward of the court is an imbecile. A ward of the court is not competent. Everything is about competence and incompetence. That's why they are representing you. Because you're not competent to make decisions for yourself. Therefore, the attorney is going to make decisions for you. There is no such thing as an incompetent sovereign. Do you know who you are? 
in propria persona, in one's own proper person. It's a rule in pleading that pleas to the jurisdiction of the court must be pled in propria persona because if pleaded by attorney, they admit the jurisdiction. So you hire an attorney, you just gave them jurisdiction. As an attorney is an officer of the court, he is presumed to plead after having obtained leave, which admits the jurisdiction. You just gave them jurisdiction. And these bar members cannot regulate the practice of law. They go and what they do, I'll tell you right now, is they pass a statute. They get their, the bar members in the legislature pass a statute. So then they can basically exclude everybody. It's satanic. Okay, they want, it's, it's an exclusive franchise. They're nothing but a bunch of liars and thieves. And uh, the practice of law is an occupation of common right. It all comes from the inns of court. Okay, this is coming from the Vatican. The inns of court, certain private unincorporated associations in the nature of collegiate houses located in London and invested with the exclusive privilege of calling men to the bar. This is in London. There is an American Inns of Court Foundation. Every state has local court chapters. This is the website for American Inns of Court. City of London is downtown London is walled in approximately one to two square miles. Uh, Imperial Parliament buildings are located in the City of London. Uh, City of London was never conquered by William the Conqueror. Okay, City of London has several gates, one of which is called Temple Bar. The only true law uh, only true law schools in the world are in the city of London and they teach 800 years of jury trial decisions. That's where the law comes from is we the people make decisions. Okay, we the people make the law. Ends of court is one of those four law schools. City of London is foreign territory to the rest of England. During the convening of the Imperial Parliament, the Queen gives a throne speech. The Queen goes to Temple Bar and requests permission to enter the foreign territory. The Lord Mayor grants permission. The Queen then walks two steps behind the Lord Mayor with her head bowed while she's in the City of London. She also, they have to leave a ransom to make sure that they let the Queen go. They might decide to hold her. So they have, somebody has to stay with the Queen's entourage there at that Temple Bar while the Queen is in there so that so they bring her back. As a matter of fact, I think the Lord Mayor does, but I'm not sure. Uh, this is concessions of England to the Pope, 1213. We will and establish perpetual obligation and concession. We will establish that from the proper and special revenues of our aforesaid kingdoms for all the service and customs which we ought to render for them, savings and all things. A penny of St. Peter, the Roman Church, shall receive yearly a thousand marks sterling, namely at the Feast of St. Michael, 500 marks, and at Easter, 500 marks. Um, 700 for the Kingdom of England, 300 for Ireland. And so <clears throat> what they're saying here, this is 1213, concessions to the Pope. Uh, King John agreed to pay tribute to the Vatican. It only after the concessions to of England to the Pope in 1213 was uh, signed. King John had to make money to pay his tribute. He imposed martial law rule and started to do things to raise money to pay his tribute. It took only two years for the people to figure out what was happening. And the Magna Carta was the result. The Magna Carta is not a unilateral act emanating solely from the spontaneous will of the king, as the charters of the predecessors of John, neither is it a treaty, for we cannot say it was concluded between two legitimate independent sovereignties, nor between two nations, nor is it a law. The barons do not appear in it as subjects, for they are freed from their promise of fidelity, and the king, brought captive, placed before them, submitted to the conditions which the conquerors imposed upon him. Magna Carta is therefore a contract, which resembles a treaty, concluded between two nations, and that one of the parties in virtue of the law of work and impose its will upon the other. And that's Perlman versus Pichet. It's a Quebec court case and Attorney General of Canada. The Crown Satanists orchestrated treaties, peace treaties so they can regroup because they're losing. The so-called peace treaty also allows the people to go back to sleep, okay? And so this is all satanic. And this is, uh, this is the definitive treaty of peace of 1783, okay? This is King George after um, the War of Independence, okay? September 30th, 1783. 
uh, it having pleased the divine providence to dispose the hearts of the most serene and most potent King George the Third, yeah, the fucking tyrant, by the grace of God, King of England and France, King of Great Britain and France. Now the interesting thing is, is that so he financed both sides of the War of Independence because the United States owed France a bunch of money after the war. Um, and so then it goes on. Uh, he's uh, Arch Treasurer and Prince Elector of the Holy Roman Empire and of the United States of America. So, so, I mean, nothing changed. You know, the United States didn't get independent from England. King George is still Arch Treasurer of the United States of America, and he's Prince Elector of the Holy Roman Empire. And so he's Arch Treasurer and Prince Elector of the Holy Roman Empire, and he's Arch Treasurer and Prince Elector of the United States of America. And so, um, <clears throat> nothing changed. Okay. Um, the, uh, He's the tyrant that was still there, okay? And the money's been going to the tyrant ever since. Um, king George was king of France and England. He financed both sides of the War of Independence. The United States owed France 18 million livres after the war. He was Arch Treasurer and Prince Elector of the Holy Roman Empire and Arch Treasurer and Prince Elector of the United States of America. Queen Elizabeth is now Arch Treasurer and Prince Elector of the Holy Roman Empire and Arch Treasurer and Prince Elector of the United States of America. And <clears throat> the reason that terminology is in the treaty is because it's relevant. It's showing his authority to make the treaty. And it's also showing he perjured his oath and breached the trust that he's operating in his private capacity. Uh, so what's new? And two years, okay, so the Declaration of Independence was in 1776, 1778, two years, it says, whereas taxation by the Parliament of Great Britain for the purpose of raising revenue in His Majesty's colonies, provinces, and plantations in North America has been found by experience to occasion great uneasiness and disorders that from and after the passing of this act, the King and Parliament of Great Britain will not impose any duty, tax, or assessment, whatever payable in any of the colonies, provinces, or plantations in North America or the West Indies, only such duty as may be expedient to impose for the regulation of commerce. So, any case, anyways, so the tyrant, you know, it's like closing the barn door after the horses get out. The Crown Satanists orchestrate the War of 1812 to facilitate the disappearance of the true Article 13 Amendment so their bar member Satanists can infiltrate. And this is the true Article 15, the Article 13 and Amendment. If any citizen of the United States shall accept, claim, receive, or retain any title of nobility or honor, or shall without the consent of Congress accept and retain any present pension, office, or emolument of any kind, whatever, from any emperor, king, prince, or foreign power, such person shall cease to be a citizen of the United States and shall be incapable of holding any office of trust or profit under them or either of them. And so, <clears throat> if you know, that's how they used to do it, okay. Under them means the federal government and or either of them means the state governments. These Satanist bar members orchestrate a bankruptcy so they can eliminate their little common law problem. Okay? Because under common law there's no judicial immunity and under common law they'd be put to death for doing what they're doing. They, these Satanists created the slave trade, they orchestrated the War of Independence, they orchestrated the War of 1812 to facilitate the disappearance of the true Article 13 Amendment because they wanted their satanic Jesuit bar members to infiltrate America and seize control of the government. See bar member videos 1, 2, and 3. They orchestrated the Federal Reserve, they orchestrated World War I, World War II, and now World War III. They orchestrated the Civil War in America to convert citizenship into the, what, the opposite of what the Founding Fathers intended. Uh, this is U.S. versus Rhodes. The uh, amendment reversed and annulled the original policy of the Constitution. Colgate versus Harvey. And while the 14th Amendment does not create a national citizenship, it has the effect of making that citizenship paramount and dominant instead of derivative and dependent upon state citizenship. U.S. Supreme Court. This is um, U.S. Senate Report Number 93-549, dated November 19, 1973. Since March 9, 1933, the United States has been in a state of declared national emergency. Under the powers delegated by these statutes, the President may seize property, organize and control the means of production, seize commodities, assign military forces abroad, institute martial law, seize and control all transportation and communication, regulate the operation of private enterprise, restrict travel, and in a plethora of particular ways, control the lives of all Americans. American citizens. A more 
majority, a majority of the people of the United States have lived all their lives under emergency rule. For 40 years, freedoms and governmental procedures guaranteed by the Constitution have in varying degrees been abridged by broad law, laws brought into force by states of national emergency. And so the, the national emergency started on March 9, 1933, and this report was done in 1973, and it was still in place, and it's still in place today. And in March 9, 1933, this is the U.S. Congressional record, dated March 17, 1993. It's an established fact that the United States federal government has been dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act, March 9, 1933, being declared bankrupt by President Roosevelt, being bankrupt and its solvent. Um, HDR 192, 73rd Congress in session June 5, 1993, joint resolution to suspend the gold standard and abrogate the gold clause, dissolve the sovereign authority of the United States and the official capacity of all United States governmental offices, officers, and departments, and is further evidence that the United States federal government exists in today in name only. Okay? So, number one. Well, what happened is they went bankrupt, and when they went bankrupt, it went under a national emergency, and it's been under martial law ever since. This is, you think anything different in Canada? Absolutely not. It's the same in Canada. This is a, a social insurance number uh, instruction sheet, and it says you, uh, you pay $10 and send it to the Receiver General for Canada. When any corporation goes bankrupt, the creditors become the owners, and it's a coup d'etat for the government, except the Satanist bar members don't tell you about it. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations of pursuing invariably the same object events as a design to reduce them under utter absolute despotism it is their right it is their duty to throw off such government and that's the declaration of independence and so it's the same stuff that went on and it's all orchestrated by the vatican okay that's where it's coming from it's all being orchestrated by the vatican it was then and it's again today he is affected to render the military independent of and superior to the civil law. Okay, so this is Declaration of Independence. This is a Declaration of Independence, if you think about it, it's a list of grievances. And so there's these are grievances. He's uh, combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our con Constitution, unacknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation, for imposing taxes on us without our consent, for depriving us in many uh, cases of the benefits of trial by jury. Um, for abolishing a free system of English laws in a neighboring province, establishing therein an arbitrary government, martial law, and enlarging its boundaries so as to render it at once an example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule into these colonies. He has abdicated government here by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us for protecting them by a mock trial. Okay, so this is all the same stuff that's happening today. This all the same stuff that was happening in 1776, and it's all being done by the same criminals, the Vatican, and the bar members, okay? That's the bar members, an extremely important part of it all, um, because they're here, and they've, they've orchestrated all of this. Uh, this is this adversarial legal system. Okay. Statutes have been passed extending. This is the taken from the causes and necessities were taken up on 1775, a year before the Declaration of Independence. Statutes have been passed extending the courts of admiralty and vice admiralty far beyond their ancient limits for depriving us of the accustomed and inestimable privilege of trial by jury in cases affecting both life and property to supersede the course of common law and instead thereof to publish in order to use the exercise of martial law martial. So, I mean, that's, that's exactly it's the same stuff they're doing today. It's martial martial law. This is uh, Diet versus Turner, non-ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge A.H. Ellett, Utah Supreme Court, and it's basically saying the same thing, okay, in 1968. In the meantime, civil law was a form of law imposed in the Roman Empire, which was largely, if not whole, wholly, governed by martial law rule. Equity has always been understood to follow the law, to have superior equity is to turn, their head, turn things on their head. This is exactly what happens when a martial law is imposed. If equity is a law, then it follows its own course rather than following the common law, thereby destroying the common law and leaving what is called equity in its place. So that's what they do when they do martial law. It eliminates common law. 
The Satanist bar members convert citizenship into what, the opposite of what the Founding Fathers intended. And while the 14th Amendment does not create a national citizenship, it has the effect of making that citizenship paramount and dominant instead of derivative and dependent upon state citizenship. The term resident and citizen of the United States is distinguished from a citizen of one of the states in that the former is a special class of citizen created by Congress. The amendment reversed and annulled the original policy of the Constitution. So it was a coup d'etat. These Satanist bar members have passed have to pass legislation for common law crimes because they've eliminated common law. So things like murder, they have to pass uh, 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 statutes for. These stat Satanist bar members passed literally millions of codes, rules, and regulations, and that's all part of it. The so-called judge plays stupid. You might well get some retard to put them in there. He's not interested in protecting anybody's rights. He's sitting in there playing stupid. The Satanist bar members work with their codes, rules, and regulations all day, every day, full time for a profession. Because all the statutes, when a statute's involved, the judge is operating in his private capacity as a work clerk working for the prosecutor always. Statutes, codes, and regulations are even passed, making it so that only subjects may participate in the government by voting, holding office, etc. This is a California case. It is evident that they, and they're talking about citizens, have not the political rights that are vested in citizens of the state. So they're talking about federal citizens. They're not constituents of any community which vested with any sovereign power of government. Their position partakes more of the character of subjects than of citizens. They're subject to the laws of the United States, but have no voice in its management. If they're not allowed, if they're allowed to make laws, the validity of these laws is derived from the sanction on the government which they're not represented. Mere citizenship they may have, but the political rights of citizens they cannot enjoy. And so they're basically saying that you know the elections don't matter. You know if if they uh, if there's a law that they make, it's because they feel like making it. You know, um, you know the validity of the laws derived from the sanction of government in which they're not represented. <laughs> it's it's a sh it's a farce. Residents, as distinguished from citizens, are aliens who are permitted to take up a permanent abode in the country. Being bound to the society by reason of their dwelling in it, they are subject to its laws so long as they remain there and being protected by it, they must defend it. Although they do not enjoy all the rights of citizenship, they have only certain privileges which the law or custom gives them. Permanent residents are those who have been given the right of perpetual residence. They are sort of a citizen of a less privileged character uh, and are subject to the society without enjoying all its advantages. Their children succeed to their status for their right of perpetual residence given them by the state passes to their children. This is all taken from the Law of Nations by Vattel. Book 1, Chapter 19, Section 213, page 87. So again, <clears throat> you don't want to be a resident. But that's what they're talking about here too. Okay, residents. Um, the bankrupt legislatures fill up with bar members. The bar members in the bankrupt legislatures create several levels of courts of appeal. It's all making business for their buddies, okay? The bar members in the bankrupt legislatures make it mandatory that only bar members can be a judge. The bar members in the courts create millions of cases that further define the law, the statutes, and the codes. The bar members in the bankrupt legislatures pass statutes and codes giving their code enforces plausible deniability. The people stop participating in the government. The government starts to do whatever it wants. The government makes war on foreign nations. When a statute's involved, which is always the judge's, um, a bar, uh, the bar member is actually a clerk masquerading as a judge. Uh, when acting to enforce a statute and its subsequent amendments to the present date, the judge of municipal court is acting as an administrative officer, not in a judicial capacity. Courts administering or enforcing statutes do not act judicially, but merely ministerially, but merely act as an extension or the involved agency, but only a ministerial, not a discretionary capacity. It's a kangaroo court. He's bought and paid for. Uh, it's a kangaroo court. It is the accepted rule, not only state courts, but of the federal courts as well, that when a judge is enforcing administrative law, they're described as mere extensions of the administrative agency for superior reviewing purposes as a ministerial clerk for an agency. Judges who become involved in enforcement of mere statutes, civil or criminal in nature, and otherwise act as mere clerks. They're bought and paid for. It's a show trial. 
A court masquerading as a judge is not competent to do anything judicial like issue warrants or orders. Issue orders or warrants. A court masquerading as a judge is operating in his private capacity and has no immunity. Ministerial officers are incompetent to receive grants of judicial power from the legislature. Their acts and, and attempting to exercise such powers are necessarily nullities. Because bar member clerk on the bench masquerading as a judge is playing stupid. If you do not say something, then it's not said. Okay? If you do not use the right words, they'll pretend you didn't say it. Because of the bankruptcy and the martial law, the clerk masquerading as a judge presume you're one of the slaves. And also makes many presumptions, none of which are in your favor. If you do not say the right things, it has nothing to do with truth or justice. They'll sell you into slavery. They want, to, they want to assault you with their liar because it gives them jurisdiction. It, in propria persona, this Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition, in one's own person, is a rule in pleading that police of the jurisdiction of the court must be pled in propria persona because if pled by attorney, they admit the jurisdiction. As an attorney's an officer of the court, he's presumed to plead after having obtained lead, which admits the jurisdiction. Okay, everything's on presumption. Okay, it's, that's martial law. That's the way martial law works. It's all on presumption. They presume you're one of the slaves until you defeat it. And... You know, it's 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 impossible to defeat it. Okay, they just set it all up so that you can't. It's it's a void judgment. It's a kangaroo court. That's the way to go with it. They want to assault you with their liars so they can sell you into slavery in their commercial jail. The, the controlling rule is that absent a knowing intelligent waiver, no person may be imprisoned for any offense unless he's represented by counsel at his trial. Okay, they got to give you a lawyer so they can sell you down the river. When the trial of a misdemeanor starts, that no imprisonment may be imposed, even though local law permits it, unless the accused is represented by counsel. They got us. They got to give you one of their liars so they can sell you down the river. They want to assault you with their liar because the liar won't object to hearsay evidence or testifying by the prosecutor or prosecutorial misconduct or the fact that the so-called judge is actually clerk masquerading as a judge. If you or your liar do not object to the clerk uh, masquerading as a judge, uh, will consider it the truth. That's why they need to present hearsay evidence. They need you to present hearsay evidence. A hearsay evidence, an image, is a fraud, no witnesses. A computer entry, a fraud, no witnesses. A liar. If, uh, it's a liar that's testifying. Statements of counsel and brief or argument are not facts before the court and are therefore insufficient for a motion to dismiss or summary judgment. But if you don't bring up the issue, they'll just walk all over you. And they do it every day. I've had it done to me on more than one occasion. Prosecutorial examples of prosecutorial misconduct, okay, asserting facts that are not in evidence, introducing admissible, inadmissible evidence, okay, commenting on the defendant's failure to testify, expressing personal opinions, inflammatory comments, withholding evidence favorable to defense. If you or your liar does not object, you cannot bring it up on appeal, which is why they want to assault you with their bought and paid for public pretender. You ask the code enforcer under oath as some examples, okay? You ask the code enforcer under oath on the stand a question, and the prosecutor stands up and answers, okay? He's testifying, okay? That's his personal opinion, but he's not. He's testifying. And so uh, what I would say, quite frankly, is maybe we should get this prosecutor on the stand to testify since he knows all about this matter. The prosecutor says his view of what happens, okay? Again, he's testifying. Why should I be surprised? If the clerk allows it, well, then I'd say, well, so why should I be surprised since you're bought and paid for by him? And that's where I'd go with it. I'd say, well, so you must be the clerk masquerading as a judge when I walk in there. Then the clerk masquerading as a judge fabricates a debt and sells you into debtor, debtor's prison. And this is a capius, okay? This is Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition. Basically, it says there's two kinds of capiuses. There's one before judgment and one after. And if you want to read it, pause it and read it. This is the one after judgment, a ad satisfaciendum, shortly uh, uh, termed uh, uh, yeah, a judicial writ of execution that issues out, out a record of a judgment where there's a re where there's a recovery in the courts 
of debt and damages. By this writ, the sheriff is da commanded to take the body to the defendant in execution and him safely to keep so that we have his body in court at the return of the writ to satisfy the plaintiff his debt and damages. Okay, so they forge your signature onto a contract and sell you into slavery. And a capius is not a warrant of the rest. So that's why, remember I told you they have to give their code enforcers plausible deniability. Okay, the Satanists in the legislature pass laws saying as long as he's operating in good faith, he's covered. Okay, so, you know, the burden's on, that shifts the burden on you to tell him that he's not operating in good faith. This is Texas Code of Criminal Procedure about capiuses. And uh, there's two kinds in, in Texas. A capius pro fine in paragraph 2 means a writ that is issued by a court having jurisdiction. And it's about a fine, basically. If you file a lawsuit, they demand an excise tax. It's a filing fee. Part of the filing fee is to pay errors and omissions insurance for the clerk masquerading as a judge. They're converting a right into a privilege. Once you pay their extortion, you convert the court case into a commercial transaction. It's a satanic religious, religious ceremony. It has absolutely nothing to do with justice. We the people have absolutely no business being in these so-called courts. And this is Chisholm versus Georgia back when we had a decent government. And because it brings in to action and enforces this great and glorious principle that the people are the sovereign of this country and consequently the fellow citizens and joint sovereigns cannot be degraded by appearing with each other in their own courts to have their controversies determined. Okay, so we have no business being in there. Um, do not give them jurisdiction. That's really the solution. Okay, jurisdiction can be challenged at any time. Jurisdiction once challenged cannot be assumed and must be decided. Defense of lack of jurisdiction over the subject matter may be raised at any time, even on appeal. And so, that's that's really the answer. Okay, if you want to challenge in personam jurisdiction, you have to do it at the very beginning. But you can challenge subject matter jurisdiction any time, any place. Uh, defense of lack of sub uh, jurisdiction over subject. Oh, I read that. However late his subjection to jurisdiction has been made, or may be made in any case, in an inferior or appellate court of the United States, it must be considered and decided before any court can move one further step in the cause, as any movement is necessarily the exercise of jurisdiction. Um, once challenged, jurisdiction cannot be assumed. It must be proved to exist. There is no discretion to ignore that lack of jurisdiction. Where jurisdiction is contested, the burden of establishing it rests upon the plaintiff. The burden of proving jurisdiction rests upon the party asserting it. Court must prove on the record all jurisdictional facts related to the jurisdiction asserted. If they, So they want to assault you with their liar because it makes business for their Vatican handlers. All governments are owned and operated by the Vatican. All courts are a satanic religious ceremony. It helps set up the next bankruptcy. They drag you into their kangaroo court, and the clerk, masquerading as a judge, forges your signature onto their satanic contract to fabricate evidence of a debt. Then they issue a capius to their Satanist order followers to fuller assault you, kidnap you, and falsely imprison you. All this makes business for their whores selling their justice in the Court of Appeals. And uh, ineffective assistance of counsel when they assault you with their liar. Uh, these are some examples. Failure to object to testifying by the prosecutor. Prosecutor, failure to object to inadmissible evidence, failure to object to inflammatory statements, failure to object to prosecutor expressing opinions. The best you can hope for is to ask for another show trial because of ineffective assistance of counsel. All this makes business for their bar member whores. It's, it's all about the business. They assault you and fabricate some trumped-up fictitious charges. Then they give you a public pretender. The public pretender fails to object to the hearsay evidence. The public pretender fails to object to the testifying on the part of the prosecutor. The public pretender fails to object to the prosecutor uh, misconduct. And then they call it a fair trial. Yeah, you got justice. Yeah, right. Yo, I believe you. By accepting the public pretender, you're giving the court jurisdiction. When the public pretender fails to object to the hearsay evidence and the testifying by the prosecutor and the prosecutorial misconduct, there are no appealable issues for the Court of Appeals. If it's not on the record, the Court of Appeals cannot see it, then they make work for their liars at taxpayer expense. The public pretender will got, get, probably get promoted to the bench. I mean, that's what they do. That's where they go. 
What's the solution? Don't give them jurisdiction. Make sure that your physical address is nowhere in their records. It buys you time to deal with the matter. File a revocation of signatures and file a notice of void judgment. File it into the case. Get right up in their face. And uh, you can actually ask for uh, an order or two, but it's actually, well, there's, you can, you could actually go and, um, you know, once the dust settles, let the, file a notice of void judgment and, and if you file it into the case, uh, you know, they'll probably, it'll disappear. <laughs> But anyway, so you can get a clerk masquerading as a judge to rule, a, you know, that it's void if you want, um, you know, but I wouldn't even bother. Is there any wonder why Christ had such complete and utter contempt for the attorneys of his day? Um, bar members are bail priests, okay, and they need to be done with the way that Elijah took care of them. And this is Samuel, 1 Samuel 18 and 40. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, and that let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. Okay? They need to be put to death. Okay? These people are Satanists. We need to put this evil away from among us. People are getting sold into slavery. What do you think the prisons are full of? Okay? That's all people that are sold into slavery. At common law, there are no prisons. Okay, at common law, let me say that again, at common law, there are no prisons. Okay, there are no prisons at common law. And um, all these prisons are commercial. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel, maketh merchandise of him, or selleth him, then that thee shall die. Thou shalt put evil away from among you. We have a bunch of Satanists that have taken over the government. We have, um, according to Mark Passio, two-thirds of Americans are practicing Satanists, okay? We are going to reap the whirlwind. Uh, the judgments of God are coming in a major way. You can see it happening. Uh, and it's only just beginning, okay? We are going to get slapped big time and until we put this evil away from among us. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Uh, the end justifies the means, is satanic. Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, and put darkness for light, and light for darkness. By which he also went and preached to the spirits in prison. Okay, that's hell. Spirit prison, that's hell. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high, and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and they shall be shut up in the prison and after many days shall they be visited. Okay, so they're all going to hell. And so um, we need to help them get there. It behooves every man who values liberty of conscience for himself to resist invasions of it in the case of others or their case may by change of circumstance become his own. And um, one thing I wanted to point out is uh, earlier I uh, mentioned that they create millions of court cases that further define the law and if you don't know of some obscure court case okay that judge is sitting up there and he's playing stupid okay and if you don't know about some obscure court case then then they'll just they'll railroad you okay they do it all the time and they might railroad you anyways because then you can just appeal it and make business for their buddies in the in the court of appeals okay I'm telling you they do that too they just go ahead and railroad you and uh, and uh, you know then you got to get the court of appeals you're making business so then they get promoted because they went and brought all this business to the court of appeals it's they're, they're just Satanists it behooves every man who values liberty of conscience for himself to raise invasions of it in case of others or their case may by change of circumstances become his own if ye love wealth better than liberty, the tranquility of servitude better than the animating contest of freedom, go home from us in peace. We ask not your counsel or arms. Crouch down and lick the hands which feed you. May your chains set lightly upon you, and may our posterity forget that you were ever our countrymen. And that's Samuel Adams, the father of the American Revolution. Um, when shall it be said in any country of the world, my poor are happy, neither ignorance or distress is to be found among them. My jails are empty of prisoners, my streets of beggars, the age are not in want, the taxes are not oppressive, the rational world is my friend because I am friend of its happiness. When these things can be said, then may that country boast of its constitution and government. Well, we have nothing to boast about. We have a bunch of criminals that have seized control of the government. Satanists, okay, and, and most of the people that get the government they deserve, okay, most people are Satanists. 
us, okay, all these so-called Christians that have these 501c3 tax-exempt churches, you know, they're Satanists because the church cannot speak the truth, okay, by definition. And so that's Satanism, half-truths and lies. Um, and uh, the streets are full of beggars. The jails, we have all these Satanist pigs running around putting people in jails. I mean, it's big business. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned of the sword come and take any prisoner from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hands. Either you're part of the problem or you're part of the solution. Um, I'm hoping that my blood, I'll be uh, blameless on judgment day and I hope that you are too. And so I hope that you spread this around and do your part to uh, put a stop to this. And um, Anyways, you're now watchmen. Circulate this video far and wide. Other videos, Bankster Thieves 1 and 2 and 3 and Churchianity series the, about the 501c3 uh, Satanist churches. Um, Do-it-yourself Canada border pigs, uh, bar members 1, 2, and 3, Unidroit, martial laws here, do-it-yourself traffic stop, do-it-yourself habeas corpus, do-it-yourself kangaroo courts, DC courts in Texas, jurisdiction. Copies of these documents can be found in my private group at Yahoo called Administering Your Public Servants. I have YouTube videos videos that are videos of private information shares that show these and other court citations that are available for a donation. Donations to support this work are appreciated. I prefer gold or silver coin, but as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept IOUs, Federal Reserve notes, PayPal gifts, checks, money orders, etc. Send me an email for particulars. Um, this is for all of the Satanist uh, revenue officers operating in their private capacity. You can put your uh, your uh, <clears throat> your uh, privileges and benefits up your rectal orifice, okay? I prefer gold or silver coin. If you find this useful, then you need to pay it forward. If you don't know what pay it forward means, then watch the movie. My blog is SovereigntyInternational.wordpress. My website is SovereigntyInternational.fyi. My email is EngineerWin at Yahoo. My YouTube profile is Sovereign Living. Facebook community page, Sovereignty International. Facebook private group, Sovereignty International. Yahoo private group, Administering Your Public Servants. Google private group, Administering Your Public Servants. I hope you get something out of it. Um, we need to put away, we need to get rid of these bar members, okay? These bar members are Satanists, every last one of them. Um, quite frankly, uh, I think most of them should be put to death, but, um, um, you know, I think there's a few that are half decent that maybe uh, are, um, um, maybe they don't deserve death, I don't know. Um, but uh, so each one would have to be handled on a case by case basis, but I think most of them should be put to death. Um, I know some that are you know, that don't like it any more than anybody else, you know, so, um, but I think most of them should be put to death. That's my opinion. Um, anyways, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this, and, um, and I hope you have a real nice day.